Yeah, good day viewers. Ken here, aka Stone Toad. Um, we're out here, we're going to do a bit of uh, walking through this national park today. Um, just wandering around here and then we're going to another one. Just to get you out in the bush a bit. Um, it's nice and green at the moment. Everything's nice and green, so um, yeah. So just to pan around a bit. Patrick over yonder. And um, put this up so you can see. New chest mount. So um hope you're able to see a bit. I'll try to like walk sideways a bit so you can see. So this is um a nice bit of scrub um bit of scrub block on this bit of bush. Um a lot of mixture of different types of trees. And if we're lucky, we might even see some kangaroos and stuff. There's a little plaque over yonder. Uh, Keith Wilson zone. That little kangaroo-y thing here is uh, actually yellow for the box, uh, rock wallaby. Um, CG only one. That's our symbol for the South Australian National Parks and Wildlife. In South Australia, Australia, in case you're watching somewhere else. So, apart from the traffic noise you're about to hear, because it is off of um, a road and there's a farm just over straight ahead, just there, outside the fence of the park. But you can hear a bit of bird wildlife. Oh, we're doing some tracking, there's some Nikes. Um, <laughs> Here, Willy Wagtails, his little blue wrens by the sounds of it. These nuts here. These are like little little pine cone things. A lot of people put like little eyes on them and make little hedgehogs. There's a chopper coming over. Ah, where is it? See if we can get the chopper on film. Sun's behind us, isn't it? There it is. The yellow one. It's just um, someone out in the joy flight. Privately owned thing. Uh, we just went through Lindock before and they give flights out of there every now and then so it's a yellow one so there you go there's a helicopter so there we go this is um this here this is um what they use for what they do is they go out scrub and they cut all this stuff and they use it for fences um like they make all these uh uh, fences made out of this stuff, so you bunch all that together and you can't see anything through it, so that's what they do. And they get crews to go out in the bush and you can see there's a lot of broken down here. But they use that for um, natural fencing and that in suburbia. And they put put it between wire and it, of course, and and ridge cap it. A bit of diggings here, obviously from bunnies. And there's... Um, the bushes got a bit thicker there. All those pine nut things, I'll, I'll do a bit of um, look at bush tucker and that sort of thing later and we'll go through some stuff. Yeah, it's going to start doing the, um, these bush tracks going to different parts of South Australia. And um, something's been into that uh, the logs there, ripping it apart. There's a little wren over there. There's a little bush over by the bush over there. If I can sneak up closer. They're, they're sucking the nectar out of those little flowers, the red flowers over there. Can you see that at all? I don't even know how to zoom this thing in. See it? A little honey eater thing. Oh, just like. How do you zoom this? I've got to ask Caitlin how to do it. I'm new to the camera. Someone's obviously brought the pram along here with the kids. The tracks there. A nice big gum down over there. Like a ghost gum. Over that way. Laying in the bush. 
a bit of a clearing coming up, so up the top there, so might be some skippies around. Ah, a bit of mud puddle. Been a vehicle through here too. Must be national parks. Oh, what was that noise I had? See, they've been through a bit of a clearing. There was a bird over that way. No skippies. And you can tell it. I it's more of a denser scrub there. But the, um, I mean, less dense scrub for that back there. With a smaller undergrowth and that. And then you've got, this is starting to open up a bit more with just the trees. Yes. Oh, what this is up there. <laughs> the quartz rock here. The quartz seam here. Running down the track. It's gold in them there hills. <laughs> there we go. Go quartz. Right on ridge line there. Got a nice big roots across the track. <coughs> kind of hoping to see some kangaroos. <laughs> this is what that's the honey eater. Well, that's nest. Those people that don't have bullets, <laughs> they're meat ant. Go like that. It normally annoys them. <laughs> and they bite. Not as bad as engines. So, oops. So this is a uh, little cottage or something, what's this one? Private residence, okay. That's private residence. Which part? No food truck. All that way. And there's a, I'll show you that. There's a possum box up there. Maybe parrots, or a certain sort of parrot they're trying to, is, is their habitat, they're trying to breed up. Um, that's what that box is. I don't know where they got wire around it for, because that will allow cats or feral animals to grab onto that. Wouldn't it? They'd be able to climb better on that. Bit stupid. Yeah. Must be for possums climbing in that, yeah. Like Patrick said. <laughs> Otherwise that's a bit silly. Because if they didn't want an animal to climb into it, they would have, there's another box in there. Um, we'll go in here, I don't know how dark it's going to be. No snakes. <laughs> there's another little bo box here. I would say that's a... Um, yeah, it's got a little hole in the back, so it's all possums. Or bats. I would say possums. Look, there's a... This here it looks like a spider egg. That's the casing of a spider's egg. Oh no, there's a few of them around here. Could be a lizard egg. Casing of a lizard egg. I mean, it's nice and dry in there. Another wreck box there. Oh, sorry, there you go. Yeah, if they didn't want something to get in the box, they normally put 
I've got a metal band around the tree just to, um, here you go, so it's about Conservation Park. <sighs> Kestrel here. A honey eater, that's a new whole honey, honey eater. That wasn't what we were looking at before. Get it there so you can read it if you want to pause it and read it, as they say. I'm going to go across this way a bit so you can see, read that information if you wish to. Pause it and check it out. There's a, there's a boundary. Four kilometre loop. A ren walk or a boundary walk. What are we on? Firetail link. So we go, We went from here. Here. Not by the swamp down here. So the ring, this ring is... Which one's that one? Number two. Yeah. Oh, there's honey. There's the honey. Bird. Yeah, we started here. Did we start there? Yes. Yeah, oh, I'll end up right okay. Yeah. So we come down. There's a swamp there. So. Yeah, we're going that way. So we're going the honeybird, honeybird track, and then we'll have to come back around. Oh, how do we get back around? We'll find out. Probably just have to come back the same way. So this this uh, idea of the old houses, they've got some um, modern windows and stuff in there. But she's all um, stone and rendered with brick. Underwater tank, uh, underground tank I should say. Same as that, this is a normal lean-to shed with uh, normal rain, rainwater tank. Uh, everything's green at the moment because we've had the best rain for a long 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 time that must be the swamp down around that way so which way does the track go this way or that way this way or that way want to go around that way or want to go that way or okay. we'll go that way it looks more of a bush track so i don't know if well, there's a bit of kangaroo poo so hopefully we'll see the kangaroos. Which, you know, with the flats and that around here, um, there's a good chance we will see a kangaroo. Didn't bring your binoculars, did we? Got to grab them out the glove box. We've got binoculars in the car. Little ones that we used to use for shooting. There's a sign of lean to or something up that way. And as you can see with these bigger trees, they've got mully roots and that, like big roots in that system, which they call mully roots and they burn for ages. And you have your pies and they can tell someone's cut up all, all the branches here, you get them off the track. There's a, you see the structure of that beautiful old tree, look at that. Some of these big ones are really nice. And there's one other one there with a funky trunk. There's a termite's nest over here. We'll just go up here and have a look at this termite's nest. So, here you've got a termite's nest. And looks like an echidna or something's been Digging the back half of it here, looking for some termites. And um, over there, you can see that tree ahead there. It's got a metal thing on it. But that's got the, the roots covered in dirt where the termites are starting to eat that tree. But um, yeah, and this one's all hollowed out already. As you can see, good place for things to hide. A couple of millipede carcasses in there. But that's probably where the echidna was stopping out for a while. Then you got this sap and that on the tree here. Aboriginals used to use sap and that for they cook it on the fire and use it on their spears and stuff. There's like a metal pick or something there. A homemade pick. More kangaroo poo. Bit of moss on the ground here. 
Oh, lichen, moss type of stuff. And amongst all the quartz. There's gold in them there hills. And yeah, and this is must be where their swamp is. So this is the swamp area. Another two white nests over yonder. So we basically got to head straight back up that way. Yeah, that's like their swampy type high over there where the reeds are through the behind that house over there. That's where the swamp would be. The track goes down and around over that way. They've got some new tree growth. You want to go that way or do you want to go back over this way, Paddy? You don't mind? And there's a gun down there. A nice split in that in it. And there's a nice um, separation of the trunk. Oh, we'll go back up to the top track. So we'll just go cross country. Look at this termite mound again. Yeah, that's a scat on there, but that's not. Looks more like a fox or something scat. That one. No numbats around here, is there? I wouldn't say there is. Another couple of branches being broken off that tree, make hollows for the animals. I'm going to head back up the hill. And big tremite mountain over there. Um, yeah, there, same way, same way. So, another ant's hole straight there. I know, I know I'm not zooming in or anything because I'm not sure how to do the zoom and on the footage. And the reason why I'm puffing is because I have emphysema. <laughs> and should we come across that track soon? I reckon that's it there. Running through there. Oh, doesn't look like much of a hill, but it's a bit of a hill <laughs> coming up from that track down there. Especially for me. <sighs> yeah. It's only been a win week since I had my operation. <laughs> All I checked my stents and had a bit of a complication. Stop breathing and heart stop for a while. But it happens. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's that's a dog scat or something there. I'm not supposed to have dogs in that park. Another bull ant's nest. See, a train eye would go to these nests every time and look around at them because if there's any little garnets, rubies, like in some parts of this state, little garnets in there, but the ants say they don't mean nothing to them. Even gold is just another rock. So they'll bring it up from down below and place it on the surface. It's just another rock to them, so. Yeah, they're starting to get me toes. So that's why you always check amp ounce when you're out bush because you could score a nugget <laughs> and since there's not really much gold in South Australia compared to Victoria you don't find too much oh, that was a bit of a climb down over that ridge <laughs> there's the house down there so we'll stand next to that, so it's even a bit of a hill there too. But it would have been less coming up that way. 
That's why Patrick's here. We keep an eye on me. 0.6 of a kilometre. What's that? Well, yeah, it's Patrick's idea to start getting out and doing a bit of bush walking. Um, some more camping and fishing, uh, which we'll be doing. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of fun guy. He's such a fun guy. The great thing about this harness, you can stretch it right out like that. Look at that little double one there, little twinsy. So there's some fungus by the gate as well. This is a kangaroo print. See the big toe? And a couple of sections of it. And there's the other claw up to the side. See, so it's done going down this way. It's a kangaroo. Went that away. That's um, an old track. It's pretty cold and pretty um, dry. There's no um, freshness to it. It's pretty hard. And see, so you skidded a bit here. Yeah. Tracking, that's another thing we can do. There's a conservation park near, um, oh, up the river there. I can't remember where it is. It's got like 40 something campsites. But I want to go in there and I'll do some trekking at a later date. Last time I was there, there was a, a dog chasing a kangaroo. Let's see these little pits here. Could be from drips from up in that tree there. And there's a big mushroom there. Someone's pulled it out. Or something's pulled it out. No more everyday mushroom. Eatable. Absolutely make sure of your targets before you start to eat them and that sort of thing. Look at this little wow. beautiful little bush wildfire flower. Fire. All those are into your hort stuff. A little horticultural thing when I was at the, at the zoo. These beautiful little white ones down here. If you don't go out and have a look, you're going to find these beautiful little gems, you know. Now, the bush has gone thick again. That's a different type of tree there. Find a, find a nut for this one. This one here. Opens uh, hang on. the cluster of them down here. The cluster nuts. Here we go. They open up like that and drop their seeds and stuff. Sometimes it's uh, extreme heat, you need to open them. And a lot of um, Australia bush won't live about heat and the aboriginals used to buy and burn off scrub um, to regenerate it and get the animals back into the area so they can hunt it what was that squawks squawks walking up there uh, i can't see anything moving yeah so um there's some more of those mushrooms slightly different again some over there. These are oh, they're on the ground. Paddy. Paddy just pointed these ones out. Nice little fun guys. Bush fungi, there's um, you know, sorrel, um, sorrel one under some of the trees around here, which looks like a clover and that sort of thing as well. Um, wood sorrel. More of that white flower up through there. Um, beautiful little solid little bush. See, well, this is really oh, how beautiful is that? And there's like the, the honeydew things at the very prickly bush, which is why the wrens in that love it. These flowers here, oh, flowers here, let's pull one off, but um. They're a gorgeous little flower, honey here of course, 
pollinate them. See the tips at the top here as they're trying to get the nectar down inside. Um, they pollinate them. There was a little awkward flower here. Oh, let's just leave. It was a little awkward. More sweet little flowers. Anyway. What tree? Fungus on the tree. My eagle-eyed spider. Oh, yeah. That's, um... Oh, what do you call it? I can't think of it. There you go, that's a lichen type mushroom. It grows on the host plant. Solid. <sighs> poisonous. If there's people who don't know what that is and they're going, that's not poison, mate. <laughs> yeah, clown. Anyway, let's get going. <coughs> Bit of a rise here. See, this is another very prickly plant. Fine prickles. But, well, sorry. But great for the protection of the birds. See, pods, heads, we're on the top here. This is getting attacked by some. Have a little glass on him. But, yes, prickly, beautiful habitat. And it looked good, doesn't it? Anywho, we'll push on and then we'll head off to Mount Crawford Forest where um, this is like natural bush and uh, over there it's all plantation stuff, um, pines and that. There's lots of kangaroos and that over there. Oop, looking out the ground. Don't worry about my magnificent filming. <laughs> So, I reckon once we top this bridge, we'll see where we're at. So there's a nice flat, flat leaf, gum variety, eucalyptus, starting to grow there. That's from that tree over there, in the back. This one's come down in the wind, and again another pine nut. That's what they look like closed. The other ones I showed you before, the rope in here, yeah, nice sandy soil here, like full sand, those little, they come out of those little succulents underneath here, little flowers with the succulents under it. So um, there's more there. That's the actual plant itself. Got little nodules come through with the flower heads. And some little succulent. So they're all through this mossy area. It's all moss and grass around here, a bit moist. So, what's that? Oh, more fungi, more flowers. These uh, yellow ones are shredding. Or something eating them. I don't know, they're dropping all their petals for the seed. There's the fungi that Patrick was just pointing out. Another one of those orange ones. We have a bit of a, a fencing structure here. Um, could be to preserve that one lot there. Although, you think they'd fence off something with a bit more bush. Yeah. So it's fenced off for a, a test subject, like a trial plot. So um, keep all the kangaroos in it out. So they um, see what impact the surrounding animals and their headlong areas. Going down the hill now. These old fence posts from when the farm was active, right here. 
of these local trees in that port. A lot of um, old school fence posts and that got holes in them, like because they're made out of natural trunks and that. And a lot of grass parrots, uh, green grass parrots and that, get them and use them as uh, nesting sites when they got hollows in the side and stuff like that. So back in the day when they were chopping trees down and doing that sort of thing, um, some did have hollows in them, majority of them. And um, yeah, that's why they were cutting the thing down in the first place. Or they cut it down solid, but over time with the water getting in it. Another troll pot over here with a gate to check samples. Kids from the university probably come up. Or National Park and Wild, they've got a blue tag here. So that could mean baits for um, foxes and that sort of thing. Feral cats. Um, never mess around with people's tags. It's like in, in um, hunting situations in America and that sort of thing, where they've got traps and that sort of thing. Mark the trail. There they've got a, a sample area between two plots. So yeah, it's got a sign on the gate over there. I know what it says. Probably tell you exactly what the plot's for. But um, we're not gonna wander over there and have a look. I'm gonna try to track out of here to the road. Or to the, I reckon we might have to go back the other way. Did you see another trail coming off of it when we were walking in? Uh, no. It just started with the one trail, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got to the house. Yeah, and then got the house and it split up. Three sections. Yeah. So we might have to get down the end of here and go around the corner where I'll see it open a bit. And we'll see if there's any skips around. They probably heard me coming, talking like a banshee, but a lot of them are used to people around here. So, I don't expect them to run away too quick. There's another kangaroo track, a bigger one. You had to cross the track this way. Another one two toes here. But they had both feet together going for it. Little Joey. Oh yeah, along that. See, they've got a, a run track through here. That's their, their, their trail. Corridor that they follow. Like um, every little living critter's got these things everywhere from the mountains and everywhere else. If you ever get stuck in an area, there's kangaroo poo just over there. If you ever get stuck in an area and follow the trails out, because they'll lead you to water and stuff like that as well. Because critters being critters, if they're not koalas, <laughs> they get the moisture from the leaves and stuff. They all need something to drink. Bird life, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, just follow the bird life, too. There's a lot of rubble and stuff over there. What's going on there? Um, follow the bird life and that out. I've been digging over there. Um, yeah, just follow the bird life and that in the air. They'll be heading in the morning and late evening to get a drink. So we've got a lot of fencing in our hair, rabbit proof fence. It's got some, some storage area, log cutting, uh, everything up here. So um, looks like we might have to get it the other way. That's where we started. So I can hear the road from here. But it means we have to track back up the road. Noisy birds. Yeah, so this is the um, properties here and the boundary fence that runs the properties. Uh, kangaroo, I mean, not kangaroo proof, but rabbit proof fencing. Keep the rabbits out of the national park. So that's private property in that there, so we'll have to go back the other way. So I'll leave it there. That's the track winding off to who knows where. And we're gonna make our way back to where we actually left the car. And then um, we'll go to another big forest where lots more people and everything are. So um, it's a recreational place, so we'll see the impact. All right, Eru. This is uh, 
again. Okay, stone toad, probably in your face. Um, yeah, so we'll head over to the other place now. Yeah, it's getting a little bit later, but um, we'll head over that way, and that's that's 